so like I said, my name is Jamie Christius. I'm a software engineering manager at Accenture. Um, Accenture used to be right across the street, basically from Morgan Tech, over in the uh, gallery. I don't know. The, the shop. So, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yes, where the hotel is. Uh, so but since then, we've moved downtown. I actually work in a studio, so it's a different model than typical Accenture. Accenture is a consulting agency on a variety of different things. Um, for our studio model, we're called the Detroit Digital Delivery Center, and we, we're basically a full stack uh, software development shop. So specifically focusing on web, but I've been pushing us more into different spaces with internet things and robotics and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, I also went through the Udacity Robotics and Engineering Nano degree, um, which is where I first learned about ROS. Um, I've done an MLT IoT bootcamp, because um, every year I try and focus on something new. Uh, and this year I'm fo focusing on computer vision and uh, being my AWS certifications. So what is ROS? ROS stands for Robot Operating System. Um, it's an open source framework. And one of the core contributors, three of the core contributors, are Fetch Robotics, um, which I actually have an example of an application we're going to be working on, uh, U of M, and uh, George Tech. They all contribute uh, to ROS and Xavier Code. So the language, the core is written in C, um, but you can use C and Python to interface with the, the different libraries. Um, the biggest thing that I've found with ROS that is kind of makes it more applicable, where you're trying to plug in different software techniques is a publish and subscribe model. So I'll go into that in a little more detail, but when you think about publish and subscribe, there's kind of a, a model or a, something that we interface with owners every single day, and that's push, push notifications, right? So I'm a Red Wings fan, and I'm sure there's some other Red Wings fans out there. Whenever we get an update on our phone from about the Red Wings, that's going through a post, publish and subscribe, subscribe uh, system. And what that means is we have a topic, and that topic uh, we subscribe to, and anything that's getting published to that topic, we get information back. So we'll kind of go through some examples, but at its core, everything is being communicated uh, through the topics. The other cool thing about ROS is because it's open source, uh, there's different plugins. So Gazebo is a simulator tool, um, and it's extendable. You can write your own classes, you can write your own logic, your own services. Um, to interface with your robot. Um, so the platform is that, so there's a ROS server which is actually running the core of everything. Uh, it's called ROS core. It started with Ubuntu on version 12. It's mainly been on Ubuntu up until recently. A few days ago, Windows actually announced it's that on Windows 10 you're going to be able to run ROS. Uh, back in November, Amazon launched something called RoboMaker. Uh, RoboMaker is basically a deployment tool so that you can deploy ROS-based applications uh, in what they call fleet mail. The other thing you can do is you, you can actually run the simulator in the browser. So now we have ROS running in the browser, or in uh, Windows and Um Some of the platforms that I've actually interfaced with it is uh, the Raspberry Pi. Um, I've used it on a kernel bot, which I'll show a little bit, and then there's the Jetson Nano. Uh, Carbon let me borrow his because mine's on back order. Um, but it's basically, the Jetson Nano is um, kind of like a Raspberry Pi on steroids. It actually has AI enabled on the device itself, which allows you to start getting uh, up and running with autonomous, computer, like small scale autonomous kernel, kind of like what we did in the past couple days. Uh, with Raspberry Pi, you have to, I mean, it's a, still in bit system, so you can install everything on it. It just takes a little more time. <coughs> but when you're doing the automated deployment through AWS and RoboMaker, you can use either one of these systems. So they have hello world examples for both uh, the Jetson Nano and for uh, Raspberry Pi. All right. So we're going to go into detail a little bit about what PubSub is and why it's seriously one of the big problems. So. It's also called the observable pattern because you're watching something and that information is getting broadcasted out. Yeah. Uh, I first learned about it in front of development. So for AngularJS, we have something called broadcasting. You're still doing the same thing, you're using topics. Um, and then I started, like, if you're using WebSockets, that also follows the same kind of paradigm. 
Um, so basically what it is, is you have published to distributed messages. And you, you can have multiple publishes pushing to a single topic, but typically but they push one at a time. Where you have a subscribe where you're receiving messages over the topics, and you're, you can receive, you can have multiple subscribers to an individual topic. So if you push one message, long, like if I push one message out to everyone here, everyone gets it at the same time, just like you would push notifications. So in Ross, we have um, nodes, so these circles are nodes, and they're trying to communicate to each other. Right? So we have our telemetry tell-off, which is basically how the robot would go forward and backward and spin and whatever. And that's our node, and it's communicating over, we know turtle one is the actual IP of the robot, and the command of velocity to, to tell the turtle sim to do something else. And that simulator will then move based on what this message is saying. Um, so this is kind of the same thing that we were just showing, but in, I just wanted to give like an overall of what Ross has. So you have different nodes inside of a package. They all communicate through a topic, and you can have multiple subscriptions. There's something called a service, and the way I think of a service is it's like a straight up HTTP request. You're sending it over, basically the same thing like a topic, but you're waiting for that response to come back. Whereas a public or the publish and subscribe, it's basically a fire and forget. With the service you want to hear, or you want to hear back from that and understand what the response is. So a lot of things that um, services are used for, are like business logic or like doing math, um, they don't want to have it just one specific piece of the application, but you want to have it distributed. Okay. So this is the AWS RoboMaker simulator. Um, this is actually what a turtle bot kind of looks like. I did not bring mine today. But basically what's happening is when you launch the simulator and you have ROS code, in this particular example, it's just spinning in a circle. I and mean, that's what we want to test. But this is called Gazebo, and it's running in the browser. We used to have to run it on uh, Ubuntu, which was hard, a little more than that. But, um, so there's different things like that you're listening to. So these are all the different nodes that we were talking about. So this is our package, the TurtleBot Burger. And then our Facebook friend and all these other different nodes are things that are communicating to each other in the package based on either Python or C++ code that we're writing. I don't have to move this slide later, but so this is an example, a real world, world example of a company using ROS. So Fetch Robotics, everything that runs on it, whether it's the web application, or uh, like on device or the docking like all of that is written through ROS. It's basically a shelf that does object detection and um, like has a LiDAR, has a camera, so it actually knows depth and things like that as a delivery system. So you can map out an entire warehouse and then basically have this robot know where certain points are on the map and have it deliver uh, packages. So I've been talking with my company for a while. We have a, an, an innovation hub in Livonia, which is strictly there, specifically focused on uh, IoT and industry X data. So we had two robots, um, letting them loan me one, basically, so that we can uh, create an interface so that we're using natural language processing with Alexa to send commands directly to the robot. So we can be like, go to room 321, and the robot will know where to travel to um, based on that. And the reason for that is we're, we're leveraging IoT, which I'll go into a little bit more with QTT. And we're also using um, the Fetch SDKs. So they have Python, I don't know if they have C, but, and, and then we're using uh, Node because that's what most of our teams know is uh, JavaScript. So if you JavaScript, Python, I'm not sure what's it. So that, that's our real world example that we're going to be working towards. Um, where this all started? was from something called a turtle bot. I basically was on the phone with our San Francisco lab, and they were like, hey, we have this turtle bot. I have no idea what to do with it. Um, what do, you, do you want to try? It was ironic, because I had just gotten done with my robotics standard degree, where for an entire year, we were using Ross and the turtle bot. So I was like, perfect timing to get looking at it. Um, what a turtle bot is, is about a six inch by one foot uh, hamburger. All of these parts are open source. So you can actually take these and 3D print and build your own. 
So there's another one called a waffle, which is about, uh, like, which is basically flatter than this, that has a camera attached to it. So how this thing sees, because there's no camera on this one, is through LiDAR. LiDAR is spinning and sending out a laser, uh, and as it receives information back, um, it kind of puts together a map. Uh, and then we're also using Raspberry Pi as the support. So this is an example of navigation with ROPS. You can see our turtle dot down here. Um, this whole area around here is what the robot has already mapped out previously. The darker red and the blue is what the robot is seeing at this point. The green arrow is the command of where it's trying to go, and these really, really small green arrows are called particles. And based on the information that the robot's getting, it's telling itself that follow these particles and go in this direction. Um, all of this is pretty standard in the box uh, with TurtleBot. So you have examples on GitHub to get this up and running. Uh, they also had an autonomous competition. Um, I didn't participate, but uh, it's pretty cool because you can actually go see the teams and see how they build their robots because a lot of them are all on the other. So you can actually like, put them in the uh, They basically had a track um, that uh, AWS Reinvent, they also came up with a, an autonomous racing track that is also open source that you can download and, and try to build yourself. Um, so this is our build. Uh, what's different about our turtle bot is we actually pre-printed another level, so there's four levels instead of three, and we put a jabber, which is basically a microphone and a speaker, so that you can communicate directly with the robot as opposed to going to have an Alexa like somewhere in the room. We actually have an onboard Alexa in a full device. And what's happening is we're taking that information and we're communicating to an MQTT bridge. Um, so just like Ross has topics, we're saying, okay, Based on Alexa, whatever information it's sending you, I want you to bridge that those two channels together so that the commands coming down go directly to the command on the ROS robot. So if we tell it to go forward, it'll go forward. If we tell it to stop, it'll stop based on the information that's being passed through these two different platforms. Or you can have it run, like I think it's called long live, 
and it basically just runs continuously. Uh, question. Yeah. So you're saying that Alexa communicate with the cloud through HTTP protocol. Yeah. And the, your code in AWS Lambda proof these execution to the turtle bug. Yeah. That? So when the Lambda code is executing, we're getting AWS IoT, right. which is broadcasting or publishing to a topic that the turtle bot is has it's called a bridge. But it's literally just mimicking the two. So it's listening up here and it's matching that information and just sending it right to um, the other topic. So the, the, the telephone topic. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, that was it. <laughs> so <laughs> this is my Twitter handle. Uh, you can email me if you have any questions. Um, some information about the learning loss and the turtle bot. Uh, one thing that's totally off topic is uh, I noticed this morning with the kids that there's actually an UTP protocol on OpenMV. So if you have like a Wi-Fi shield, right? For those. Yeah. Yeah. So if you got a Wi-Fi shield, you could actually process the information from the camera that you're receiving and either send that to the cloud or vice versa have the Alexa like take a snapshot or whatever.